If you're a new real estate agent, here are five things you must avoid to have a successful year. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all having an incredible day. If you don't know, my name is Aram. I'm a real estate agent here in the Chicago land area. And today's video is about the five things you must avoid as a new real estate agent so you could save some money, make some money, and generate business. And I'm telling you, they seem very simple, they seem very easy, and hell, these are just things you have to not do. Let me know in the comments if you're doing any of these five items currently, and when you're gonna stop it, or what you're gonna stop, and what do you feel like I'm right or wrong? Let me know in the comments, and while you're at it, like and subscribe for more content like this. Okay, that being said, Let's get down to business. First thing you must avoid as a brand new real estate agent are online courses and coaching. Caveat, of course, educating yourself, learning how to generate business, all that is important. But when you're a brand new real estate agent, there are so many coaching programs out there. There are so many online courses, you know, promising you the, you know, that golden nugget, that, that missing piece, the tip to your success, the everything, right? And it's very easy as a brand new agent to be sold on something and spend $3,000, $4,000, $1,000 uh, on that course. You basically think of it this way. In a business, that's like your seed capital, right? That's the money you need to stay in business. That's your operating fund, right? So when you throw in $3,000 at, uh, at an online course that you know for damn sure uh, does not have the same results, uh, I think by what, five to 10% of people actually succeed from the, any of these online courses because it's hard to watch a video and then duplicate exactly what they're doing. And the reality is, whoever is selling you a course, chances are, they're, if you read their success story, it's gonna be something like this. I couldn't figure out how to do it any other way, so I figured out my own way and here's how you could do it too. But why can't you figure out your own way as well? Save yourself the money, try to avoid uh, online courses and coaching. I would say more with online courses, coaching, maybe that one-on-one -on -one stuff might be effective. Second thing you must avoid as a brand new real estate agent, office meetings. They're a complete waste of time. There's nothing that's gonna happen at an office meeting that's gonna generate you a business, teach you anything new that's going on in the world, or help you in any way. Trust me, all that's gonna happen is you're gonna waste an hour of your time. God forbid you have office trainings or anything like that, right? You're gonna waste a lot of your time. You're not really gonna learn like that top tier knowledge that you need to be successful and you're not gonna really do anything. You're gonna find yourself commingling with other agents, maybe grabbing lunch afterwards or talking about your transactions, blah, 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 blah. You don't wanna go down this rabbit hole. It's a waste of time and it's not effective. Does not get you business, does not make you money. And we can't afford not to make money. We're brand new real estate agents, all right? Let's go. One thing about office meetings, that's a soft spot for me. When I was a brand new real estate agent at my old brokerage, the managing broker would make me go to these office meetings. And unfortunately, my desk was in the bullpen, so I can't even avoid these office meetings, right? And I hated it to the point where I would just leave when the office meeting started. They got mad at me and I said, hey, let, lady, listen here. You don't pay me to be here. I pay you to be here. So you don't tell me what office meeting I need to show up at. So have the same approach if your managing broker or your office is you know, pushing you to go to these waste of time meetings. Number three, uh, busy work. As a new agent, this is a trap I found a lot of my new team members falling into, a lot of new agents, and myself. I got stuck doing busy work for three weeks, okay? That's a complete waste of time. What do I mean by busy work? You, you know, coming up with like brochure ideas, you coming up with your business page, you writing a description about yourself, you, uh, what is another thing that could be busy? You're figuring out your business cards or just, you know, asking around, asking some questions or walking around, learning the market, all busy work. If you got no clients, what do you need a business card, a business page or any of that for? None, you need clients. The reality, you spend eight hours doing absolutely nothing that pushed your business forward. This happens a lot with new agents. You start going to work, let's say for the first three months, you're in the office eight hours a day, right? But if you really audit your time, you'll find that almost maybe 15 minutes of those eight hours are spent doing anything lead generation re related. And this is why agents are like, I can't seem to get traction, I'm doing all this work, I'm burnt out, but you know, I'm seeing no results. Actions lead to results. Number four, bad splits. And I need to explain this a little bit. As a new agent, brokerages are gonna sell you on, hey, you know, we're the best brokerage, we do this, we do that, we do that, da, 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 right? But take a minute and be like, okay, but does that help my business? 
One of the few things that I think an office does that helps your business is number one, the location they're in. Number two, like the interior, like how nice is it? So if you're making content, you have a nice background. Or if you're bringing clients in, you know, it shows for your credibility. Are they paying for photos? Are they paying for signs? And do they do your brochures, right? So you, just so you don't have to worry about them. Other than that, anything else that the office tells you, hot garbage. Training, hot garbage, right? Leads, hot garbage. You can just move on, right? Do not join an office because they gave you leads because I promise you 95% of the time, there's no leads to give. <laughs> That's the cold hard truth, right? So you wanna avoid bad splits, but at the same time, you don't wanna be caught up in a situation where you're only thinking about the splits, right? There's a lot that the office can do, like those four things I mentioned, right? In a good location, they have a lot of business, like the office does a lot of business, so there's a lot of listing inventory coming up that you can you know, stay in contact. They have a lot of high performing real estate agents. You can just be around, deal with that overflow. Don't just be focused on the split, but at the same time, don't give up 50%, 60% of everything you make just to get leads promised to you. If it's a really good situation, you can do 50, but if you're a new agent, you could do it. Like if you're not joining a team, maybe like a 60, 40 or a 70, 30 split is fantastic. If you're joining a team, 50, 50 makes sense, but you better be sure that they're giving you leads. Forget the training garbage. They best be giving you leads. That's all I gotta say. And finally, number five, this took some time to figure out, but I think this is gonna save you a ton of money. Paid lead gen. What do I mean? If you're a brand new real estate agent, you've seen the ads on Facebook, you know, 12 uh, listing appointments a month guaranteed, or like, you know, $20 million in production guaranteed, or, you know, or 60 leads a month guaranteed. Any of that nonsense you see on Facebook, don't fall for it. Do not fall for it. I'm telling you, it's not effective for several reasons. Number one, the individuals generally generating these leads, they're not the most high quality leads. You're still doing a tremendous amount of work to convert them. Number two, you're a brand new real estate agent. So if you don't know how to talk to a lead that comes in, how to answer their questions, you're just not gonna be as effective with converting that uh, paid lead into an actual client of yours that makes you money, right? And what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna throw $2,000 a month to this uh, you know, marketing company that is basically gonna generate leads for you. And the reality is they're keeping $1,500 a month and dumping $500 into ad spend. What you could do is teach yourself how, to, how marketing works and then dump $1,000 a month into lead generation and then you'll be on a completely different level from any other agent plus any other marketer or client, right? So there are some things that I definitely want you to do. One final thing, I, this is a little extra. One thing you don't want to avoid is your friends, your family, your sphere of influence. For the love of the, all that is good in this world, do not avoid those people because they are going to be the first ones to do business with you because they already like you and trust you. And it's really that simple. That's what clients want to see. That sums up the five things you must avoid as a new real estate agent. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do me the greatest honor. Please uh, you know, like the video, subscribe if you're brand new, leave a comment with which one of these items you're doing right now. If you already made the mistake, how much did it cost you? I'm just curious to learn. And hopefully someone else watching this later can learn from your experience as well. I think they'll be incredibly, incredibly helpful. So let's make that happen and of course, we got the Patreon. If you wanna support the channel, what we're doing here, you wanna get access to the exclusive team trainings, exclusive videos before they pop up, the online coaching, a whole bunch of you know investment stuff I got going on, join the Patreon. We're gonna ramp that up very quickly in the next couple of weeks. So the link is in the description, join it, and I will see you next week.